The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Tommy Grimes. Body and spirit, says the philosopher, are twins, and only the good Lord knows which is which. This leads us to the great and as yet unanswered question. What are we? That which the body announces, or that which the spirit suggests. Is man a perpetual puzzle, an eternal enigma, a monumental mystery? Or can it safely be said of most people? What you see is what there is. My dear Samantha, why are you angry? Because you are up to your old trick. Which one? Well, once again, you're out to take what's mine. What is it this time? James. James? Yes, James. But you won't get away with it. You shall not take James away from me. I'll do whatever I have to to stop you. Even if I have to kill you. <laughs> drama, Two Sisters, was written especially for the Mystery Theatre by Sam Dan and stars Patricia Elliott and Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. For there is no friend like a sister in calm or stormy weather to cheer one on the tedious way, to fetch one up if one goes astray, to lift one if one totters down, and strengthen while one stands. Yes, there is no friend like a sister. But with all due respect to our poet, there is no enemy like a sister either. We find ourselves in India perhaps a hundred years ago. We are in a busy, bustling railway station. An English lady of about 35 alights from the train. She is quite well dressed, but she is showing the effects of a long, hot journey. Well, now, where have you been? Sir? Sir? Yes, sir. Well, I do believe the good woman has taken leave of her senses. Well, I predicted this, you know. What did you predict? Well, didn't I say it would happen to you if you remained in India long enough? The heat, the dust, the, the everything that gets to us all sooner or later. I am compelled to stay here, but what is your excuse, Samantha? You have a rich sister in England. But I'm not Samantha. You... You're not Samantha. No. I'm the rich sister, Sophia. Oh, no, no, no. That's impossible. No two human beings can look so much alike. We're twins. But still... Identical we're... twins. What do you mean? <laughs> it's one face. And even more, one body. Well, I do beg your pardon. That word may sound a bit forward, but I was only using it uh, professionally. Professionally? Uh, yes, yes. I'm Dr. James Parker, district medical examiner, and I'm a very good friend of your sister. Oh, how, how do you do? As we are <clears throat> we're very proud of the work she's been doing here, and uh, that little school she runs. And Oh, yes, 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 first rate. We always thought she was born to be a schoolmistress. Uh, well, you must be exhausted after your long journey. Uh, uh, let me drive you out to your sister. But she said her servant was to pick me up. Who, Chandra Lal? Oh, well, no, I don't see him about. But he should be here. Well, and he will be. There's no doubt about it. But he may arrive in five minutes or an hour or at midnight or perhaps even tomorrow morning. <laughs> let me see your luggage. <laughs> And shall you be with us long? I'm not sure of my plans, Dr. Parker. Oh, no, no. You must call me Jed. Must I? Well, of course. Because I intend to call you Sophia. To answer your question, it all depends. On what? On my mood of the moment. Oh, you're a person of moods, are you? No end of them. Suddenly I may find myself in a mood to listen to some Strauss waltzes, and then I'm off to Vienna or to gaze upon the magnificent statue of David, and I'm off to Florence. You're, you're, you're so different from... Well, I, I must call her methodical cement. Oh, yes. She was always quite the planner. And you're not? Why bother to make plans? They always go awry, don't they? One never really knows what's going to happen. My poor husband, he was 
the most philosophical man I knew. He was convinced he would live to be 80. And yet, one night, he had a sudden heart attack. He was dead by morning. He was only 42. Oh, well, uh, I am sorry to hear that. And so I'm a widow. Did I plan on that? Poor darling. He had planned to amass a fortune of 10 million pounds. But I suppose I shall have to settle for the 5 million he did manage to make before his untimely demise. Well, even the most delightful of journeys must come to an end. Delightful? The feast, the insects, <laughs> the dust. Ah, the company. Well, I must confess. I did enjoy the company, too. Uh, your sister's house. Oh, and there's your sister. Sophia! Hello, Samantha, darling. Well, let me have a look at you, dear. But what happened to Chandra Oh, uh, Dr. Parker. Uh, didn't we agree? My name's James. Oh, of course. James was kind enough to give me a lift. Oh, that was good of you, James, dear. Now, I'll have the servants bring in your luggage, Sophia. Sophia, follow thing. Goody. Oh, James? Won't you join us for tiffin? Oh, no, 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 thank you. I'm sure you two have so much to catch up with. Dinner, then? Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, goodbye, Sophia. Au revoir, James. Till dinner, James. Yes, bye, Samantha. <sighs> oh, I feel like a new woman. <laughs> Been quite a trip all the way from London, halfway round the world. So he's dead. Charles is dead. Yes. Poor Charles. Suddenly, without warning. Well, now you don't have him either. Either? Oh, my dear Samantha, you never had him at all. Well, that isn't true. You took him away from me. How could I take what never belonged to you? You stole him from me. Oh, why would I steal him? Because you'd always steal anything that was mine, anything and everyone. You fairly and truly believe that, don't you? Why did you come here? Why did you come here? Well, shall I tell you? It was your great dramatic gesture, your tragic renunciation of the world, your... Farewell to all earthly pleasure. Oh, that's nonsense. I'm doing good work. Good work. Oh, yes. Spells with a capital G and a capital W. It isn't often that one can combine virtue with vanity. You were always far too cynical, my dear sister Sophia. Now, why have you come here? Perhaps to let you know that there's no point in continuing this charade any longer. What charade? This. This conspicuous performance of good works. I've come this long way to tell you that you can stop pouting and return home. Home? Yes. Home to London, to parties, balls, the theater, the ballet, to civilized people. After all, I have five million pounds, you know. Five million pounds? And a guilty conscience. Yes. I do have a guilty conscience. Then you admit you stole Charles away from me. No. Stop that nonsense. I have a guilty conscience because before each of them died, I promised first mother and then father that I would always take care of you. It's time for you to go home. But I'm home now, Sophia. This is my home. This is my work. My life is here. And my love is here. Ah, love. And who is he? And when may I meet him? But you've already met him. James Parker. You're in love with James Parker? Yes. And is he in love with you? I think so. What does that mean? Well, uh, well, sometimes he appears to be. And at other times? Oh, stop cross-examining me as if I were a prisoner in the dark. The fact is, my dear sister Samantha, you are the prisoner every time you fall in love. You become a prisoner of all sorts of fantasies. I don't think James Parker is in love with you. And how do you know? Well, yeah. I saw the two of you together for exactly one minute. That minute told me everything. How could that minute tell you anything? The look in his eyes was not the look of a man in love. His smile was not the smile of a man in love. And the tone in his voice... Perhaps he's not in love with me just yet. But if Yes. I... But... In time... How long have you known him? Well, we met when I first arrived here five years ago. Five years. Well, I know that sounds like a long time. But out here, life pursues a different pace. I dare say. Well, 
I wish you luck. Oh, 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 uh, come in, come in. Awake, or oh, heaven born, awake. Who are you? I am only Chandra Lal, by the favor of the Sahiba. Oh, is that a fact? Yes, I am the hit. And what is the hit? The hit matka, if it pleases the heavenly born. Well, I don't know if it pleases me just yet. I am the head of all the servants in the house of the Sahiba Samantha. And where is she? The Sahiba Samantha. She is at the school where she teaches the small children the secrets of the government. What secrets? Oh, how to combat the evil spirits in the, the milk and in the water and the devils of the smallpox. Oh, many things of great mystery. A most laudable and worthwhile endeavor. <laughs> I have been sent here to inform the favored one that there is a visitor. Dr. Parker, I presume. Oh, this is magic indeed. How, how was the presence able to divide... It's right the... on schedule, Chandala. Right on schedule. <laughs> Chandalal. Is Sahiba? Where is the Sahiba Sophia? Where is the Sahiba Sophia? Ah, it is difficult for this unenlightened one to say. Speak, fool. I know full well about lying. When was the last time that I had seen my sister? Uh, this insignificant one was last privileged to gaze upon the Sahiba Sophia this morning. And where did she go? Away. Uh, well, obviously, idiot. Where? And with whom? Uh, where? This was not uh, revealed uh, with whom? Uh, with Parker Sahib. Parker Sahib? Ah, uh, uh, the Sophia Sahib uh, returns. Uh, even now, maybe her the horse and the carriage. She went out riding with James. Thank you, James. It was the most instructive ride. Oh, hello, Samantha, dear. Hello. Hello, Jane. Oh, hello there, Samantha. You're just in time for dinner. Won't you sit down with us? Oh, no, no, no. Thanks, Samantha. I'm due at the hospital this evening. Good night, James. Well, I hope to be free tomorrow morning. Uh, good night, Sophia. Samantha. <sighs> there. What's for dinner? I'm starved. <laughs> Riding about all day. Grimps want a rub and its appetite. You may serve the soup, Chandler. And the country really is... Pretty, when you see through the dust. Where did you go? Oh, here and there. Oh, any place in particular? The truth is, there's not all that much to see. The landscape isn't nearly as pretty as our own English countryside, you know. Yes, I know. Well, how did you spend the whole day? Well, we had lunch at the club, then we watched a polo match, but I suppose mostly we just sat around and talked. About what? Mmm. Mm. Oh, this is truly delicious soup, Chandler. Do you suppose I might have some more? Never say you to a native servant. You must always say thou. Why? Shall the empire totter on its foundation? Oh, talk to him any way you please. My dear Samantha, why are you angry? You pretend you don't know why I'm angry? That makes me angry you still. Suppose you tell me why you're angry. I'm angry because once again you're up to your old tricks. Which one? Once again, you're out to take what belongs to me. What am I supposed to be taking this time? James. James? Yes, Sophia, James. But you won't get away with it, I'm warning you. You will not take James away from me. I'll do whatever I have to to stop you, even if I have to kill you. <laughs> That's certainly short, sweet, and to the point. What were we saying as our story began? Great indeed can be the love one sister has for another. And just as great can be the hate, which will prevail when they both want the same man all bets are off, at least until Act Two, which will be here shortly. Love comes in many guises. There is the love between parents and children. The love between sisters and brothers. But of course, they all pale beside the love between men and women. How many great deeds are performed in the name of this love. And how many great crimes. We are getting there. 
You... You are going to kill me. I'm warning you. Don't take James away from me. Oh, your argument has a familiar ring. First it was don't take Charles away from me, and now it's James. And my answer shall also sound familiar. James is not yours in the first place. Yes, he is. He is. He is? He will be. He could be given time. Time? You've had five years. I have had but a single day. Already he has chosen. That isn't true. Love has chosen. You have chosen? You saw that I wanted him and that was enough for you. Nonsense. Please, Sophia, let me have James. My dear, what have I to say about it? You've won. Oh, I admit it freely. Anytime both of us want the same man, I have no chance. But you don't want him. Now listen to me. I know him better than you do. I've seen the complete James, not just the gallant who's courting you. I've seen James when he's at work and, and during the rainy season when he's out of sorts. I've seen the unhappy, dissatisfied James who bemoans the fate that forces him to earn his bread in India. He is forced to live in India. Oh, yes. Because he's the youngest son, he received no portion of his father's estate. And, and because he's not really a very good doctor... He found it hard going at home. As my husband, he can afford to live quite happily in London. But don't you see? That's why he's after you. Because you're rich. I think that's rather sensible on his part. Yes, but it's also dishonest. It shows a lack of character. If he has no character, why do you want him? Because, Ronnie, he, he isn't nearly good enough for you. He's more than good enough for me. Oh, now. It's true. You can have anyone you want. I have to settle for anyone I can get. Oh, please let me have him. Let me have James Sophia. Please. That decision is not mine, Samantha. Why can't you see it? But you could refuse him. Oh, Sophia. Do this one thing for me, and I shall never ask you for anything again for as long as I live. I told you, my dear, nature will take its course. Sophia, please save me. This life I'm leading, you're right, it's just a conceit. It's because I have nothing else. You have everything else. You can come home with me and live like a lady of means. But those means will not be mine. They'll be yours. I need something of my own. I need James. And I need James, too. No, not as much as I do. Oh, my dearest Samantha, why do we sit here and argue about it? James is the one who will choose... What are you doing here in this filthy marketplace? Hmm? No, James. Do you say that when you enter the square? Do you see these stalls? You're no longer in the year of our Lord, 1877. You're wasted in time to remote antiquity. This is how it was when Alexander the Great came storming down the mountain passes into India. Yes, and it's still a filthy place. Oh, Samantha, I, I feel so good just talking to you. Do you, James, really? Yes, you have no idea how, how good you... Well, how marvelous you've always been for my morale. But, James, that's because... I... That's because you're you, Samantha, the one and only. Come. Where? The club. We'll have lunch. Uh, that is, unless you have something better to do. Better? <laughs> I can't think of anything that's nearly as good. <laughs> I am so happy I ran into you, dear Samantha. You're the, the one person in this world I'm looking for. Am I? Yes, yes, we've known each other for so long. You're my nearest and closest friend. And now... Yes, now? And now I, I want to tell you a secret. Yes? Samantha, I'm in love. Oh? Oh, yes, yes, love... For the very first time in my life. <laughs> Surely you've seen it. How could you not guess? I've... I've seen it. Well, I want to ask you if you, th if you think there's a chance for me. Well, yes, James, yes, yes, oh, yes. how wonderful. I'm asking you because you're her sister, her twin. And who would know her moods, her feelings better than you? What are you saying, James? Do you think she'll have me? Who? Sophia. Sophia. 
You want to marry Sophia? Ah, I'm in love with Sophia. Oh, isn't it obvious? Doesn't everything about me proclaim it? But I... Oh, I, I know what you're going to say. You're my true friend and her loving sister. Your concern is for the happiness of us both. We're going to say... But you two have known each other scarcely a week. But it's a week that's been an eternity. An eternity spent in heaven. And we didn't need a week. We fell in love at first sight, which is the sweetest love there is. James, I want... Ah, I think you're going to preach caution. Which is in keeping with your methodical nature. And, well, I love you for it. But life is so short, my dear. One must... Sees every moment. Oh, James, I just don't Oh, dear, sweet, loving Samantha. There's a tears of happiness. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for having a sister like Sophia. Chandelal! Chandelal! Where are thou, lazy scoundrel? What is the heaven born's pleasure? Where is this Eva Sophia? Well, it has not been revealed to this poor... But why do I ask thee? I know where she is. She's out with James. 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 Shall the center of the universe have her dinner? No. The center of the universe shall not have her dinner. You know what the center of the universe intends to do? She is going to sit here and get quietly, but definitely... And even irrevocably drunk. Drunk? And shall the false spirits that dwell in the bottle solve the radiant one's problems? No, they won't solve them. But they'll make me forget them. Ah, yes, it is but a shallow forgetfulness. Chandra Lal, I am about to tell thee a secret. Attend. But first, bring me the double-barreled rifle. The double barrel rifle? Does the heaven born wish to hunt? No. The heaven born intends to kill. Yes, my good Chandelal. When that false, sharp toothed victim walks in here tonight, I shall. Yes? I shall place the bullet from the under barrel into her faithless heart and. Yes? And then. I shall pierce my own heart with the bullet from the over barrel. Say, It doesn't matter, Chandelal. My heart is already broken. Oh, go, thou. Fetch the rifle. Me, a question be asked. Why does the eye of beauty intend to do away with herself? Why? Because justice must be served. Of course. But in what manner? In the prescribed manner. An eye for an eye. I shall have killed... I must pay the price. If this witless one may inquire, why does the protector of the poor wish to kill the Sahiba Sophia? To teach her a lesson. Ah, but what is the lesson? Both teacher and pupil shall be dead, and who shall profit? But something must be done. Of course, of course. Parker Sahib loves the Sahiba Sophia. All to the good. Let him have the Sahiba Sophia. Let the killing serve a purpose. But it is serving a purpose. Revenge. The revenge that is sought by the eye of beauty shall last but a brief moment. But what other revenge is there? Let him love. Let him marry. Let him return to England with the Sahiba Sophia and help her spend her millions of funds on all the delights the foolish world has to offer. This is revenge? This is revenge. Because thou art the Sahiba Sophia. No, no. Now which of us is drunk? Me or thee? No, no. I am the Sahiba. Samantha, thy mistress. The heaven born can also be the Sahiba Sophia. If she so chooses. What? What sayest thou? In the eyes of the world, who is to say which is the Sahiba Samantha? And which is the Sahiba Sophia? They have one face, one form. But, but Parker Sahib, he knows the difference. All men know the difference. Then, then how could this deception be maintained? Uh, the difference is one of manner. It is in the smile, the bold and the confident smile, the lightness of the step. And the voice. 
Well, anyone could tell by the voice. Which practice? The dispenser of the lights could match the voice of the Sahiba Sophia. <gasps> the difference is slight. Yes. I see what you mean. It is truly a plan for the greatest revenge. Yes. I could do it. Thou art correct, Shangri-La. I shall need the doubled barrel. But only one bullet, Shangri-La. Slowly, the blessed one must consider... Consider what? The voice of the inner spirit. The voice that chastises when one does wrong. You mean conscience? Will the chosen one be able to live with the dead? Absolutely. I've been awakened. I see the world in a new light. And the money. The five million. It's mine. Well, it's as much mine as hers. He loved me. I told you, Shangri-La. He loved me. But he didn't know it. Oh, she comes. This Sahiba Sophia approaches. Yes. Let her come. Let her march in here. Her face flushed with victory. Once again, she's cheated me. Robbed me of what is mine. Enjoy your triumph, my darling sister. Luxuriate. <laughs> Revel in it. And I shall wait for exactly the right moment. <laughs> The right moment. To do what? We've heard her plan. But can she be seriously thinking of murder? After all, isn't blood supposed to be thicker than water? Well, yes, it is. But in a fit of anger, it also flows faster. Meanwhile, we are flowing inexorably toward the third act, which shall arrive here shortly. According to Pythagoras, the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides. That, of course, holds only for geometric triangles. But what cannot be so neatly calculated nor finitely measured are the human triangles, which do not consist of area but which are constructed of emotion. And where is the instrument or the formula sensitive enough to give us a reading on that? Hello, Sophia, darling. The man's a dear. You're not angry. Why should I be angry? Well, we did have words. Ah, yes, about James. Well, I was foolish. But do you mean that? Well, of course. After all, as you said, nature must take its course. Oh, I'm glad, Samantha. Oh, I'm so happy. Could you... Could you do something for me tomorrow? Well, of course. Could you lend me your blue dress? The blue? Well, yes, dear. It looks so smashing on you. I, I was thinking perhaps it might do something for me. <laughs> Mantha. <laughs> oh, is there a man you're out to impress? Well, yes. Oh? <laughs> Who is he? Well, it's old Colonel Bruce Loudon, the district administrator. But I was thinking perhaps I could get some government funds for the school. Well, it never hurts to look one best. Oh, and besides, he's an old roué who... Flatters himself, he still has an eye for what he calls a good stock. <laughs> well, you shall have my blue dress and a bonnet to match. Sophia! Ah, uh, Sophia, wait, wait. Well, what are you doing here in town all alone? Hello, James. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes? <laughs> it's not so clear. It's Samantha. <laughs> are you sure? Well, the only thing that gave you away was the voice. Ah, uh, the voice? It doesn't sound mm, quite like so clear. Ah, uh, but perhaps with practice. Well, I must say, Samantha, something has come over you. There's a likeness in your set, a sparkle in your eye. I've never noticed it before. But perhaps it wasn't there before. Well, in that case, it's probably due to Sophia's good influence. Yes, Sophia, of course. Sophia. Yes, we are so happy, the two of us. And I'm so happy for both of you. Well, Sophia says you'll be coming to England to stay with us. Well, yes, she's been kind enough to invite me. Well, I am glad, Samantha. I cannot tell you how much I value your Friendship. friendship. Well, yes, I know we shall always be friends. Oh, yes, James, of course. And who knows, one day perhaps, 
even more than friends. Chandralal? Is the Sahiba Samans? Who am I? Chandralal? The Sahiba Samantha? Or the Sahiba Sophia? The magnificent one is without a doubt the Sahiba Samantha. In this dress? In this bonnet? Well, at first, even Pakistan took me for the Sahiba Sophia. Ah, yes. The look, the dress, the tilt of the head, all this speak of the Sahiba Sophia. But the voice, the voice immediately says, Behold, I am the Sahiba Samantha. Yes, the voice. That is all that remains. We must alter. We must adjust the voice. We must learn to speak in the voice of the Sahiba Sophia. It is even so. Her voice, is it lower than mine? It sounds like... Like a so. What sayst thou, Chandelier? Ah, the fountain of all wisdom must try harder and practice longer. Yes. But it shouldn't be too difficult. I listen to the sound of her voice and I capture it. And now it reverberates in my brain. Now listen. Hear me speak in the true voice of Sahiba Sophia. Nature will always take its course. Nature and love, they both go their appointed rounds regardless of our hopes and desires. The first I know, Sandra Love. Oh, it is the voice of the Sahiba Sophia herself that speaks to the holy mouth of the anointed one. Yes, and I can do it any time I have to. It is magic. Mighty magic indeed. Oh, Samantha, it's so hot. <laughs> you should be here in July or August. No, oh, Samantha, dear, I shouldn't. And I won't. Neither will you be here. In July and August, we'll be back in England. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. England. Mm, it's been five years for you, hasn't it? I wonder if there been many changes. Are we still the same servant? Yes. You know them all. Bella's is still the butler. Mrs. Caffrey has stayed on as housekeeper. Selena, Margaret, and Ruth are the maids. Uh, oh, and... Yes, Joanna. Joanna? I never liked Joanna. Mm, neither did I. But she was one of Charles' favorites. She was always creating all sorts of mischief, spreading all sorts of rumors. What sort of rumors? Oh, no. gossip to the effect that Charles was thinking of divorcing me. Whatever gave her that idea? Oh, who knows? Well, what else do I have to know? What else do you have to know? I, I mean, um, uh, 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 what is there of interest? Oh, dear. Well, I don't know. Actually, things were rather quiet. Oh. oh, what time is it? Close to midnight. Oh, no wonder I'm so sleepy. I think I'll turn in. Good night, Samantha. Yes, good night, Sophia. Chandelal! Come to me. Fetch the double barrel rifle. The Sahiba, she will use the rifle now? Now. The Sahiba is ready? I am as ready as I shall ever be, Shandalal. See? She sleeps. The Sahiba Sophia sleeps? Yes. She sleeps. And nothing and no one shall ever waken her again. Mm. Oh, no. no, no, no. Oh, dear Sophia, don't wake up. It shall not help. Goodbye, dear sister. Goodbye. And now, I am free of you at last. The Sahiba Sophia is dead? No. The Sahiba Sophia has merely changed bodies. I am the Sahiba Sophia. Thou dost not believe? Then listen. Listen to the voice of the Sahiba Sophia. I am the Sahiba Sophia. I was born Sophia Wallace. I became Mrs. Charles Besto. I had a twin sister, Samantha. I went to visit her in India. One night, a marauding band of dacoits raided her house and killed her. Then they burned the place down. Now, 
Isn't that what happened, Chandra Lal? Who am I to contradict the inspired words? The truth that this has been revealed to the heaven born. But, uh, uh, Yes, Chandra Lal? Well, uh, Chandra Lal is a poor, unworthy creature. He is dead beneath the radiant one's feet. But he must live. And when the protector of the poor returns to England, who will feed Chandra Lal? Hungry men have been known to speak desperate words in their agony. Who knows what a tale may fall from the lips of Chandra Lal? I understand. And how much money shall be required to assuage the hunger of Chandra Lal and keep his tongue from wagging? A mere pretense. The unconsidered and unmissed drippings from the magnificent one's fortune. How much, Chandra Lal? One hundred thousand rupees. One hundred thousand rupees? To be paid each year. To be paid each year? Truly, as the protector of the poor can realize, it is a bargain. Not really. Thou art a greedy fool, Chandalal, and here is the only payment thou shalt ever receive. <laughs> James, it was horrible, horrible. Ah, oh, now, Sophia, darling. It was a hot night. I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd walk near the river. Suddenly, I heard shots in the house and screams, and I saw these awful men rushing away. I, I, I was terrified. No, no, Sophia, darling. It's all right. Everything is going to be all right. Well, no, nothing is ever going to be all right ever again. The police came, but it was too late to do anything. Samantha had a rifle. Yes. But she was asleep. They shot her in her bed. Chandra Law. Oh, poor Chandra Law, who never harmed anyone. And they burned the house down. And look, look, it's in ruins. Why? Why? Why could they have done this? Well, I don't know, but it was probably done by fanatics who objected to her teaching modern ways to the children. James. James, please, I want to go home. Please, please take me home to London. Yes. Yes, my darling Sophia. Yes. What a magnificent mansion. Yes. Yes, this is the Spurstow Mansion. But we shall soon change the name to the Parker Mansion. Ah, oh, hello, Selina. Oh, it's Miss Sophia. Welcome home, Mum. Thank you, Selina. Uh, Selina, this is Dr. Parker. He shall occupy Mr. Spurstow's old suite for the present. Very good, Mum. Have our luggage brought up to our room? Oh, but first, we simply must have a cup of tea. At once, Mum. I wasn't prepared at such short notice. So this cake is left over from last night. Ah, it's just fine, Selina. Oh, if I remember correctly, that's the front door. Now, who, who could be calling so soon? It's probably that police inspector. Police inspector? Well, Scotland Yard has been coming by every day. A police inspector? For what reason? Oh, I wouldn't know, Mum. He's been talking to Joanna. Joanna? About what? I can't say, Mum. Shall I let him in? Well, we... Can't very well refuse to admit a representative from Scotland Yard, of course, Selina. Yes, ma'am. Now, why would a police inspector come calling here? Well, a servant probably has gotten into some sort of scrape or other. Inspector Denby, ma'am. Oh, uh, how do you do, Inspector? I'm Sophia Festo, and uh, this is Dr. James Parker. We have just arrived from India. Yes, ma'am. And what may we do for you? Your husband, Charles Fursto, died about three months ago, 5th of April, to be exact. Yes. Uh, yes. We called Dr. Souls. He's been the family physician for many years. Yes, and he signed the death certificate. His diagnosis was heart attack. Yes. Uh, that's what happened. Of course. Uh, we have been talking to one of your maids, uh, Miss Joanna Higgins. Uh, she says that your husband and you fought a great deal. That's a lie. She says she could overhear the arguments. He felt that he had made the wrong choice, that he was through with you. Uh, this is how Miss Higgins phrased people. Do, do you mean that I must submit to the slander of a discontented servant? Miss Higgins says that you poisoned your husband because you were afraid he would cast you aside. Sir, how 
How dare you? J- Jane. Yes, really, Inspector. I trust you have evidence for these outrageous... Yes, yes, sir. We do. Well, what sort of evidence? The body was exhumed. An autopsy was performed. Your husband had been poisoned. Traces of aconite were found in his body. Aconite? Yes, Dr. Aconite. Which, as you know, is a deadly poison. But... Uh, but what, ha- what has this to do with me? We made the rounds of the various chemists, Mrs. Burster, and one of them remembers selling you a vial. Oh, but, but that isn't true. He will testify to that effect. You said you needed it to get rid of some rats in your cellar. No. He has a record of the purchase. Well, Mrs. Burster. I... Uh... I'm innocent. You will have the opportunity to prove your case in court. But, but I'm not, Mrs. Thurstow. Therefore, I did not buy that poison. I, I, I did not poison Charles. You say you're not, Mrs. Thurstow? I'm not, Sophia Thurstow. I'm her twin sister, Samantha. Samantha Wallace. I, wait, listen, listen. When the decoys, the bandits, raided the house, they, they killed Sophia. But I saw an opportunity to acquire her fortune, and so I posed as my own twin sister. I'm not Sophia. I'm Samantha. Ask Chandra Lal. He'll tell you I'm Samantha. Ask Chandra Lal. James, tell him I'm Samantha. Oh, my poor child. I'm Samantha. I've been imitating Sophia's voice, but I'm Samantha. James, you've known me for five years. Tell us I'm Samantha. This is Sophia Spurster. It is my duty to inform you that anything you say from now on may be used against you. Those are always chilling and ominous words. And since she said a great many things, they had an impressive array of statements to use against her. Try as she might, she couldn't convince anyone that she was truly Samantha and not Sophia. And so in the end, although she did get away with the murder of Sophia, she had to pay for the murder Sophia committed. Somehow, that seems an equitable solution. Certainly justice of a sort was done. I shall return shortly. This has been a story of sisters, and most of it took place in India. It is fitting, therefore, to consider the writings of that great authority on India, Mr. Rudyard Kipling. He also had something to say about sisters. He wrote, Never praise a sister to a sister. The results may be far different than you could ever suppose. Yes, sisterhood is strong and beautiful and enduring just as long as a man doesn't get in the way. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Marion Selvis, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.